Hello and welcome to the program. This edition covering Nigeria's Northeast. But first, the top stories. We begin in Oyo State, where armed intruders laid siege at the government secretariat earlier today, attempting to enter the governor's office and the state house of assembly. According to eyewitness accounts, the men dressed in military camouflage covered their faces with masks and scarves, stormed the secretariat, which is usually deserted during the weekends. It took the combined effort of policemen on duty at the governor's office, Amoteko officers and other security reinforcement to stop the intruders who arrived in buses and attempted to hoist a flag suspected to belong to some agitators. Residents living around on passing through the secretariat say they heard gunshots and security agents engage the suspected hoodlums. Security operatives, including soldiers, have now taken over the area barricading all entrances and exit points while traffic has been diverted away from the scene. A two-time senator representing Edo South Senatorial District, Senator Matthew Urogide, has switched allegiance to the All Progressives Congress, APC, as he formally defected to the APC on Saturday. This return to the party is coming after what he describes as a 13-year, three-month sojourn in the People's Democratic Party. Mr. Rogide, who describes himself as a foundation member of the APC, explained that he is glad to return to the fold of mature politicians, a party in whose leaders he has trust and confidence. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board and the Nigeria Police Force have read the Riot Act to candidates preparing for the 2024 UTME and operators of fake websites as they warn against patronizing such sites. At a joint news conference in Abuja, the Force Public Relations Officer ACP Ulumu Iwade Jobi says the emergence of several fake websites created by unscrupulous individuals with the intention of misleading candidates had been observed and the police is working to track the fraudsters. And starting now in Yobe State, the government has procured foodstuff worth 300 million naira for distribution to boarding schools whose SS3 students will be writing the 2024 West Africa Examinations Council, WAEC, and National Examinations Council, NECO. Handing over the food items to zonal inspectors in Damaturu, the Commissioner for Basic and Secondary Education, Mohammed Sani Idris, says the state government has also settled both WAEC and NECO registration fees for the 18,623 graduating students. These are the assorted food items procured by the Yobe State Government to feed the graduating SS3 boarding students across the three zones of the state. The aim was to keep the students in extension so as to receive extra lessons on the rudiments and tactics of answering the WIAC and NECO examination questions. This extension is attracting over 300 million naira being spent by this government to make education better. I want to tell you that it is only in your best state that the government is shouldering the, the responsibility of the payment of WAEC, NECO and MBIS fees completely. The 18,623 students have all their payments been settled by your best state government. It is only in your best state that a government is giving its citizens a private inclined education that is being paid from the treasury of your best state government. It is our prayer that this one after the other, the Commissioner for Basic and Secondary Education, Yobe State, presents cash donations ranging between 400,000 naira to 600,000 naira to the boarding schools to cover other expenses of firewood, beverages, among others. The list they will collect is 400,000. So some are based on the population of the schools, some are collecting 600,000, others are collecting 500, 400, all, all around. Total number of schools, are, I think uh, they are up to uh, all, all the senior secondary schools, but uh, they are being zoned 
for especially here in GG Damatru, we are accommodating those of the GG Damatru, uh, Gujuba, or the, the rest of the zones. So also that of the Portiscum, will, uh, those from Gyalzarma, Damagum, Portiscum, Nangere, Fika, all will be zoned in Portiscum. So also that same applies to those in the, in the other zone of uh, which is holding in Guru. We hope that. Uh... The principals of the benefiting schools are happy that with the provision of the food items, the students can concentrate on their studies ahead of the examinations. I really cannot find what adequate enough to express to you my gratitude, our, to express our gratitude for, for, the, for the governor, honestly. This will go a long way in helping the student. The only problem we have nowadays is the feeding. Once we have the feeding to feed the student, I believe we will have uh, a good encouragement to see that the student perform well. Uh, government is trying, actually speaking. And uh, with, 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 with such gesture, our students are improving very, very much well. And uh, during the extension, if the students are not, are not fed well, actually nothing will go well because we are after their feeding and their academic pursuits. On behalf of His Excellency... The state government has also settled the examination fees of the 18,623 students who will be writing the two examinations. And staying with education matters, the Taraba state government is warning principals and head teachers or anyone plotting to frustrate or sabotage its free education policies to desist forthwith or be made to face the full wrath of the law. This follows the state government's discovery that despite paying WIAG fees for all students of the state, principals and exam masters connive to sabotage government's efforts by collecting money from parents and students for registration. The warning was given by the State Commissioner for Education. This is Kofai Ardo Kola Government Day Secondary School. One of the schools benefiting from the free education program, as well as the free WIAC registration of the Governor Kefas administration. Like their counterparts in other schools, students here are on holiday, except for this handful staying back for tutorials, preparatory to their forthcoming WIAC exams. Beneath the serenity on the surface, things may not be as rosy as they seem here, as investigation by Channels Television reveals that the school authorities allegedly sabotaged the state government's free education policy. Um, I'm a student of this school and I joined this school. Some students who spoke with our reporter say class. even though the state government has already covered their WIAC registration costs, the school principal and examination master asks them to pay and in some instances remove their names from the registration list and replaces them with external candidates. This, according to the students, is corrupt enrichment by the authorities and is at the expense of bona fide students. According to the exam master, he told me and my mother that the Ministry of Education gave them few lists of those who are writing work free. That so we will pay for money for we will pay the work registration. I checked my name. My name was among those who are going to write the work. But there's one of my friends again. His name is George A. George. His name was not shortlisted. Uh, I submitted. Uh, the examination master of the institution and his assistant denied the student's claim, insisting that the Education Resource Center of Taraba only gave them approval for 247 free slots as against 316 candidates which they submitted. They insist that the resource center gave them November the 20th, 2023 as deadline and any registration beyond this date is not captured for free WIAC registration. This directive is, however, contrary to that issued by the governor. Based on the, the letter I received, this is the letter with me here. The letter stated that any student that was captured on or before 20th November 2023 are the bona fide candidate of the government, that is the interla. So all that that were captured on, that is after 28 November 2023, should pay all the necessary registration fee. We take our cast to the Ministry of Education, that's to the resource centre. When we take our cast there, they say, it's, if you did not come before a speculated time they have given, you have to pay to your registration by yourself. That's what we do. 
While the examination master and his assistant are given reasons for not registering all the students due to the limited number given for free WIAC registration, the principal of the institution on her part says no student of the institution has been omitted. Um, I don't know anything like that because why should we collect 40-something 40, 40 thousand for such an examination? We don't collect that amount and we have not collected any of such amount from any student. Like I said, all my bona fide students who are there and the registers can be very verified from the resource center, all 247, we have registered them at no cost but at the cost of government. That claim by the principals is false. The state government says there is a you deliberate know, intent on sabotaging the free education policy of the governor and is therefore sending a note of warning to, to principals and head teachers to forthwith no desist from collecting any money from parents for the free WIAC registration or any other tutorial that has already been covered under its free education policy. The State Commissioner for Education denounced the claims of the exam master and principal that the Education Resource Center determines the number of students that would sit for the exams. You know, it's one way that they have been using since we started WIA registration to confuse the public, to give them this false notion that the Education Resource Center is corrupt and is uh, apportioning uh, slots to schools. The Education Resource Center has no power on determining who writes WIAC because some parents truly cannot afford to pay WIAC fees for their children. And some principals who have done this, there are some students that this year will not write WIAC because some principals replace them with others to make money. Already, one principal and an exam officer have been suspended and the state government says efforts are on to apprehend and expel such corrupt persons in order to pave way for a more effective and transparent administration of the state government's free education program. Now this week was all about Eid al Fitri for most states in the north and the celebration was marked colorfully as it was full of lessons and merriment for the Muslim faithful in Gombe state. The spiritual devotion of the 30 days of Ramadan fast culminates with Eid prayers, banquets and Derba festivities in the state. For Governor Inu Wayahaya, the Salah celebration in Gombe begins with Eid prayers, a launch, a lunch hosted at the new banquet hall, visit to the Emir's palace and ends the next day with a homage paid on him by the Emir of Gombe state, Shehu Abubakar Shehu, on Governor Yahaya at the government house. An age-old tradition called Hawan Guamanati in Hausa loosely translated as government derba. Every part of the Gumbe Central Eid prayer ground is taken by Muslim faithful who are here to offer prayers for a successful end to the Ramadan spiritual exercise. <laughs> Governor Inua Yahya joins the Emir of Gombe, Abu Bakr Shehu, Abu Bakr III, and other dignitaries for the two rakat prayers. On the second day of the Salah feast, the Emir of Gombe pays homage to the governor at the government house, a tradition that dates back decades called Hawan Guamnati, or loosely, government Durba. The Durba is a colorful display of the splendor and richness of Gombe tradition and the bravery of its men, an event exclusively performed on special days for special people. Governor Yahaya holds the title of the first Dan Majin Gombe. The Emir of Gombe, while commending the peaceful coexistence and love enjoyed in the state, lauds Governor Yahaya's transformative policies. The governor built the school of nursing. There is also the Go Health scheme that has enrolled over 40,000 beneficiaries. 
I feel our state is on the front foot because within the space of five years, the governor has carried out projects worthy of commendation. Justice is to say it as it is whenever someone does something praiseworthy. Governor Yaya then uses the occasion to encourage devotion, kindness and love as the true essence of Ramadan, promising to carry out more developmental projects in the state. He also calls on the people to engage in profitable agriculture as the year's farming season approaches. We ask them, both myself and the His Royal Highness, the Emma of Bombay. The people should be steadfast. We should approach the problems of this country with passion and determination to overcome all of them. And you can see that everybody is happy. And uh, ahead of this, inshallah, we partake in agricultural activity to ensure that we restore both the normal livelihood of Nigerians and put us back on track so that we move forward. As government work and personal businesses resume on Monday, Muslim faithful seem fully supercharged to not only continue their daily businesses, but to deploy and practice the enduring lessons of the 30 days Ramadan spiritual exercise wherever they go. Welcome back. The Derba Festival is an ancient, traditional, annual, cultural and religious Equestrian festival celebrated as a core part of the Salla culture, which has been practiced for centuries. This festival, however, was suspended in Adamawa for about five years due to security challenges and the COVID-19 pandemic. This is responsible for the large turnout of people from across the state to mark this year's Eid al-Fitri celebration, holding at the Palace of the Lamido of Adamawa Emirates in Yola, the Adamawa state capital, with Governor Umar Fintiri former Vice President Atikwa Bubakar, traditional rulers and other dignitaries in attendance to witness the event. We are grateful to Almighty Allah for allowing us, uh, through his mercy, to observe one of our pillars, uh, the five pillars of Islam. And with this, I congratulate all Muslims across the world particularly Nigeria, uh, and in particular to urge us to live a life of moderation as enjoyed by Islam uh, through helping the needies and ensuring that we coexist and respect one another. These are my message today for the good people of my state and Nigeria. It's been a decade since the infamous mass abduction of 276 girls from their school in Chibok, Borono State, northeast Nigeria, by Boko Haram militants. While a large number have either escaped or been rescued, with close to 100 thought to still be in captivity, the kidnap sparked a huge global outcry and focused attention on victims of a bloody jihadist insurgency that has displaced more than 2 million people. And for 10 years, there have been calls from one government to another for the release of the remaining girls. We're now joined on the program by one of the Chibok parents, Mr. Lawan Zana, father of Zaina Zana, who is still believed to be in captivity. He joins us from Chibok via Zoom. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Zana. It's been 10 years. Thank you. And in the last decade, what's go what goes through your mind over time? Well, uh, it is 10 years now, uh, we really in anger with what has happened to us since uh, uh, day 14 April 2014. Uh, we are now looking ahead to see that we need the interventions of the government and uh, other uh, donors who can help to rescue the remaining uh, and to get still in captive. This is our prayer for the, uh, the nation and world itself. Mm. You say so, 92 as against yeah. what is believed to be 100. Is 92 the real figure, Mr. Zana? Yes, yeah, 92 is the real figure. 92. All and, right. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Land on that thought. As also, we are now uh, looking. We are now seeking for the uh, help 
for risky with remaining one in the captive. Because since then, we that are one still yet, we are not so happy. We are waiting. Some of us have even united with their own, but our own is still yet. So we are now, tomorrow we are marking 10 years. Our daughter is still in captive. And we don't know how condition they are living in. Mr. Zana, how's the family been coping knowing that uh, there's been no closure? Well, the, we are still, we are hoping in hunger because the, the, what, uh, what has happened to us is, is just, it took us by surprise and we cannot be able to express to tell that this is what is on, uh, what, is, uh, what, is, uh, what is going. So, but it has happened. Our plan now is we want to unite with our own too, as our colleagues have also united with their own. So we need help from the government. We need help from the organizations. You that uh, the media that are taking our voice all over the world, people are hearing us. Our own is still in captive. And uh, we are now uh, looking for help. Mm. Now, there's been more stories about uh girls being kidnapped and uh, more about others being rescued. Do you know how many have been accounted for? Not about the Chibok girls who were kidnapped on April the 14th, 10 years ago, uh, you know, but subsequent kidnapped and kidnappings and even the ones in recent times. Yes, uh, the subsequent kidnaps that happens across the Nigeria in, uh, at life, you know, that that one, it has happened. It's the same, but some they have, you know, united with their own. They have been kidnapped and they brought it back with the help of the government and the security agencies. But our own, we we, we we even lost hope that we want to see even one. But at times, we some have start from one, we come and get twenty one, and after all, some have escaped they are from the from the Visa forest. They come and uh, with the help of the federal government, too, they also, uh, you know negotiate and brought 82. So uh, like, likewise, in Debchi and other Kankara and also their own have, we are there in Debchi when the Burka Haram brought uh, their own uh, daughters. We are there, we go and sympathize them in Debchi because what has happened to us, we have seen uh, uh, sympathy, we have seen love from people across the world. So from there, you know, it harms our mind that we that our own to have been kidnapped. It's better we let us go and meet our own people that such has happened to them. We went to Debchi. At that day when we went to Debchi, it's the day that Boko Haram brought their daughters. We are there in Debchi life. So uh, it has happened. Subsequent kidnap has happened. But you know, like Chibo, yet our own is still many, like, you know, almost 92 still uh, is not is yet to be found. So we are now looking for help. We are now looking for help. And now, we Mr. are Zana, hoping in, in the anger with uh, the previous, what has happened to us. Now, Mr. Zana, the agitation for the release of the remaining Chibok girls has passed through several ad administrations from former President Goodluck Jonathan to the immediate past President Muhammadu Buhari and now to this administration. I'm curious, as many others would be, about whether or not government has reached out to Chibok parents, uh, perhaps, you know, um, unofficially about progress made or lack of it and reasons for it about the state and condition of the Chibok girls or whether there should be hope that they would return someday. Well, uh, as you, you know, uh uh, the the uh, for our own, you know, uh, the governments have you know uh, come to the aid of uh, you know uh, uh, bring the remaining as I said earlier. But our own, as in some conditions that you announced, uh, you know, we parents we are not we cannot tell anything about conditions that happen or the the, the past uh, government. You know, Jonathan, you know, it has happened during his time. And, you know, Buhari have come and took over. He brought the um, uh, almost 100, one, one or three without the escapees. He, the, by based on negotiation. 
But and now that you know the present governor, uh, present government, uh, Bola Ametinugu, we are now praying that we are still looking for you know help in this government to bring us the remaining one. And lastly, um, well, I'll take it that that answer means that government has not reached out to you at all in the last few years, either from the federal or the state. But lastly, Mr. Zana, yeah. yeah, if you could, you know, speak with your daughter, if you could tell your daughter something right now, what would you be saying to her? Peradventure, somehow she gets to watch this video now or afterwards. What would you be saying to her? What I can say is I want to see her. I want to unite with her. Well, my family is it has still love her. We want to be become we want to be as a uh in, in, in we want to unite as I the biological father. I want her, I need her, I love her, I want her to be with me. Wow. And uh, if she's watching your... this if she's watching this video. We share your pain, Mr. Zana, as well as, you know, uh, the pain of other parents who are still awaiting the return of their daughters 10 years after the abduction of the Chibok girls. And we pray uh, that your desire will someday, somehow, be actualized, actualized as you reunite with your daughter someday soon. Thank you very much, Mr. Zana. Mr. Zana is Thank the you. father of um, one of the abducted Chibok Aisha. girls. Aisha, who joined us via Zoom from Chibok. Thank you so much for joining us on the program, Mr. Zaina Zana. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you very much. And that's it on the program. Thank you so much for watching. Join us again next week when we'll bring you another round of editions of Newsroom Series. I am Bukola Koka. Bye for now.